Hi there, my name is Anna Chapman and I'm Head of Service at London Stadium Learning and I'm absolutely delighted to have been invited down to um, Woodford Green Athletics Club with Essex Ladies. My name is John Stowe, I'm a Young Athletes Co-Secretary of the club and also Head of the Endurance Section as well at the club which is quite a big group of uh, five groups on a Tuesday night. Uh, we represent the club in the Metropolitan League which we've done very well in the past four or five years. We've won it the last four years and are leading again this year. We also have a current English Schools Champion in my group who won the All England Schools Champion this year for 800 metres. His name is Danny Raymond and I started the journey for Daniel Rowden back in 2009. This year he represented Team GB in the Olympic Games. Wow, that's amazing. So um, you've been a member of this club for a very long time then? I actually ran for the club back in 1979 until 1985 and then my children arrived and then I came back to the club in about 2005 as a coach and have been there ever since. So going way back to when you started as an athlete yourself, um, what inspired you to want to join an athletic club and, and start training? takes me right back to 1968 when I was 15 years of age. I wasn't in a great place but uh, my mother and father got me into Belgrove Harriers and at the age of 15 I joined them and two years later I was very fortunate to get a Great Britain best running for Team GB in the European Catholic Schools finals up in uh, Dublin and I think those two years I've broken two club records I was very much an endurance runner. We also had a very strong squad of four or five of us and we actually came second in the south of England and fourth in the national and won the Surrey County title and it was in 1977 I got married and we moved to Walthamstow and I got invited to come down to this club and I've not looked back since then. Wow that's very very impressive so when you um, had, had you retired from from being athlete yourself or did it cross over naturally into coaching? I'd sort of retired at the age of 90, uh, the age of 35 when I was about uh, 1985 when my first son arrived. My three children arrived fairly close together and my objective really was to help my wife bring those children up. And then I sort of basically got back involved in coaching because my, my oldest two children joined Harlow Athletic Club but didn't actually stand for that long. And then I just thought, I want to go back to my old club. And they made me feel welcome again. And that was in 2005 and not looked back since. That's amazing. Mm. And <coughs> can you uh, explain maybe some of the things that have changed over the years? Some of the things that maybe um, some of the techniques or the facilities or clothing that might have changed since when you were uh, performing as an athlete and, and to now? Yeah, I mean, it's changed dramatically. I mean, the training facilities, we didn't have the all-weather tracks we've got out there now. In my day, it was a cinder track, and there weren't that many around in those days. There's far more all-weather tracks. So in that way, um, I don't think a lot's changed in a way because the training has changed in some ways. But in some ways, um, the, old mef the old ways that I used to run with my coaches, I've not really changed that a lot with the groups I take now. Um, and I feel, you know, our endurance group is getting a success now, largely because I was an athlete when I was a child. I think that's really helped out an awful lot. And what kind <coughs> of support did you have when you were an athlete? Did you um, have to be self-financing, um, organising? Was it were you very reliant on your parents to take you? When to I the started needs? at Belgrave, um, basically, I was very lucky. My my the. The actual club hall was only a 10 minute walk away from me and the track was down at Battersea Park so it wasn't a long, that was only a train journey. So I basically just financed myself, I was quite lucky my parents were, my dad was working. Um, the support I had from Belgrave was absolutely outstanding. Without that support I had there from guys, it would not, I would not be doing what I'm doing now because of the support I had from those guys and unfortunately they've all passed away now. Uh, but they were brilliant. Without that support, I don't think I would be doing the sort of stuff I'm doing here at, at Woodford Green with Essex Ladies. And, and how do you um, think maybe the diets have changed? You know, were, were you very dedicated to eating the kind of right foods, if you like? I think in our day, it was very much a case of a meat and two vegetables diet. Whereas now, it's you've got so many fast food joints out there. 
which we didn't have in our day at all. Mm. Our day, all you had was a wimpy bar and that was it. Everything else was, you ate at home and that was it. Even pub meals weren't around in our day. So we were very much brought up on the basis of home cooking. Whereas now, the fast food joints are out there big time and the problem you've got is that children will want to go to those and that's not the right food in the long run. And so one of my big philosophies is with the groups I take is to make sure you start eating properly sooner rather than later. Don't continue in a bad way because it will just get worse as you grow older. You'll put weight on. You said uh, about training not really changing that much. Um, but uh, with some of the athletes that we've spoken to, they've actually had to um, have a job at the same time. I don't know if that was the same. In my time, you, you got to a top level, like Steve Ovet, Sebastian Coe. <coughs> excuse me they all had to work you know it was a nine to five job and you come home and you train when you when you finished your job nowadays it seems to be totally you know you get funding and it's a totally different situation now as to what it was back in my day you know likes of Brendan Foster Steve Ovet, Co, Cramp they all had to work as I did and you'd come home after a day's work and you've still got to go out training I was only running 40 50 miles a week these guys were doing 120 miles a week I just don't know how they did it because my job was quite important to me. I got married, you know, and I, my career was important to me. And I put that first before my running because although I got a GB vest as a junior, I didn't really have that sort of passion to keep going as an athlete and put that amount of mileage in. You know, my own wife and my, my career came first. It's incredible that you had to do that back then. So um, if we talk about you as an athlete first, so what do you think your most... Um, what, what are the most challenging things you've had to, to deal with, um, whether it's circumstance or injury? Or Very good point. Injury, this is a classic. Um, <clears throat> I took part in the South of England Junior in 1970, 3,000 metres, and I placed third. I got a bronze medal in that, which I was really pleased to. The guy that won it was Julian Gota. He's well known now. And I didn't warm down after the race. And the next day I went to school, because I was still at school at that point. I decided to go on a bike and have a pedal on the bike. That wasn't the idea. My coach said you need to do a 30 minute recovery run or run steady on the Monday. Went to training on the Tuesday. I couldn't take part in the interval session. We had set the part leg session. I'd actually strained my two cruciate ligaments and that was quite a bad, bad injury. And it gave me three weeks of hardly any training before the English schools. And it cost me, I feel, an England vest, which I think I would have got because I ended up coming fifth and I was hoping to get second place. So I learned an awful lot from that, from not warming down, not listening. And that's a big thing. I sort of mentioned that, that what I've just said then, to the athletes I coach now. So you, you talked about your bronze medal, which is incredible. Um, what other um, things have been your highest achievements? What, have, um, what other achievements? Um, when I was at Belgrade, two club records, I suppose, as a junior, GB International Vest in the European schools, um, winning the Surrey County schools title and breaking the county record. It only got broken, it only got my record, only got broken about 10 years ago, holding two school records, which still stand today, believe it or not. Wow. Um, I just enjoyed doing it. I used to run from 400 metres right up to a half marathon. I ran, you know, when I was at Belgrave, I ran a 10 mile road race, never done one before in my life and I ran about 51 minutes, which I was quite pleased with, um, running just outside five minutes a mile. So I just enjoyed taking part, but my, I suppose my speciality was more 1,500, 3,000 metres in those days. So you spoke about some of the greats from that time. Um, anyone in particular that, that was made a real special moment because you, you got to compete against them? I think really Julian Gota, because I competed against him in the south of England and then obviously in the national cross-country championships, and I know that Julian went on to sort of achieve great things. You know, he went to the Olympics and he was such an icon to sort of look up to. Um, he was my age, obviously, but I always look at Julian was the man. But I also have huge admiration for Steve Ovette mm -hmm. because of his, he was the, to me, he was the best athlete this country has ever produced as a middle distance runner. Fantastic kick. And he had the ability and he had the mental knowledge to how to win a race. He was a fantastic athlete. So how did you um, get to watch or, or learn about these athletes? Obviously you talked about someone that you trained with, but um, could you watch them on television? Or Yeah, I mean, once I sort of joined this club, 83, I, sorry, tell the lies, 1978, I began getting involved and watching these athletes on the telly. 
I remember a case of I watched Charlie Spedding win the London Marathon in 1984 and he was behind me in English schools and my wife said to me, wow, you actually beat that guy? I said, yeah, I raced him in the English schools back in 1970, I think it was, and I was one place ahead of him. So see, it's those sort of things you remember when you look back at that. Yeah, a really special moment. Um, and anything in particular, sort of memorabilia or, or artefact or something that really means a lot to you that you might have? doesn't have to be a medal. <laughs> what, that I achieved? Yeah, or, yeah, something that you've taken with you as, as something um, that you're... I think the, the Great about. Britain uh, selection going to Dublin, it should have been uh, Madrid, but it got moved because there was some political thing going out in Spain. Um, just to, to wear that GB, just to walk out of my house uh, with the GB tracksuit on, well, not tracksuit, I mean normal suit, was quite amazing because my dad said, you need to walk. I'm not going to take you down the station. You need to walk because you should be proud of it. Mm -hmm. Although I didn't feel quite that then. And I've still got it now. That's amazing. <clears throat> so then moving forwards to you being a coach. Yeah. So just interested in your sort of asking you the same things, I guess. So what might have been your challenges? What was uh, might have been something that you had to work on or? I think the biggest achievement I probably had as a coach, and I never want to boast about being a coach or anything like that, I think was really getting Danny Raymond, who had not done any training during lockdown hardly at all. He came back in March this year uh, and he ran a session. That I said to him, you can run 155 for an 800, if not quicker this summer. And I said it, I said, hand on heart, I think you can do that. He actually went up to Manchester and he ran one minute 53.26 and won the title and he won it easily. And that was a big challenge taking it on and I thought he's got more talent than I've ever seen in anyone b before. And that includes the likes of Daniel Rowden and Conan Solomon who I did start out in the sport. And so he was part of this club? He, he still is part club. of this club. He's oh, trained with me tonight. Oh, he was really? down here tonight. Oh, wow. And he's just had uh, tonsillitis and he's come down tonight and done 10 times 400 in around about 67 seconds with only a 90 second recovery. So he's recovered quick. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And what do you think people's attitude towards athletics is generally as a sport? Um, there's a lot flying around the media with drugs and everything else going on, which doesn't help at all. And I think that does take the shine away from it. I think you've still got the buzz of the running sort of side of it with the London Marathon and everything else. You've got the thing, you know, and a lot of this couch to 5K thing that's going on on that, which my, my two of my boys are doing, funnily enough. Um, but I, I do think it's slightly lost its way probably because of the drug situation that's gone on. Um, but it's one sport I really want to see this country back on the radar next, this, next summer. You know, the, we've got the World Championships, we've got the Commonwealth Games, we've got a real opportunity of really shining as a country and really doing well. And I really hope that we can do it in those two. And the Europeans, which is probably going to be a less sort of fragmented sort of championships because the, the top athletes will have competed in the other two championships before. So hopefully the less that, slightly below that, which one of them is Kane and Solomon, who are another lad I started out in this club, and he's getting back into fitness, may end up running, getting his first full senior GB uh, vest. And <clears throat> do you think um, young people's attitude towards athletics is, um, is strong or...? I think people worry about being out in the streets running. Uh, I think the trouble is in my day, you went out running, you know, which you had to do, you had to train during the winter as, as we do now. I think now it's harder because there's so much crime about, you know, I would not like to have any of my athletes running around the streets of London, I must admit. I just don't think they're safe. And I think this is taken away. <clears throat> I mean, I live in Harlow, so I train a group up there and we're very, very strict on any road runs we do. They got parents running with children, which I will, will not have children running on their own. Mm -hmm. The only ones that do are a lot older than them, and even then they're followed with a car. So I do feel that the, the safety thing doesn't help the situation. Wow. So I was, I was thinking um, <coughs> in terms of the sort of appeal of doing athletics and mm. how things have changed. So um, as an example, one of the athletes I was speaking to mm. was saying back in the 80s, 90s, mm. um, there weren't many channels on television. No, very so, true. So people watched these, um, you know, elite athletes, and they became celebrities. Mm. If you yeah. know, everybody kno mm. knew um, Steve Cram, and um, you're going back to the likes of the um, 
What's his, uh, Roger Black, people like that. That's right. I'm going back to when I was <laughs> oh, yeah, watching yeah. them as a, mm. as a child. And you had other. Steve Cram, you had Peter Elliott, you had obviously Ovet and Cam, Co was probably gone by then. And you had lots of other athletes, but you're right, just the four channels, that's all you had. I think there's sort of a glamour <clears throat> side to it, hasn't there? Isn't there? And I think Hussein Bolt and. Um, yeah, you get athletes at that level. <clears throat> But I think we've got athletes coming through. I think what Keely Hodgkinson's done this year has been absolutely brilliant. She's 19 years of age and she's not frightened to race anybody whatsoever. Her attitude is just bang on. She's so, such a good attitude. And that's what makes her a champion runner. It's just that so mentally, having it mentally up there. Yeah, that's what we've spoken <clears throat> to a lot of athletes <clears throat> about as well is the sort of uh, training rate and <clears throat> hard work rate to the kind of mental... Um, uh, determination as well, and, and the kind Absolutely of right. of both. I mean, Danny's fine with that. Another girl I coach, Abigail Reed, she got an England vest two year, last year, come seventh in the English school, so qualified to run for England. Unfortunately, it didn't happen because of COVID, the outbreak started, so she still got presented with the vest anyway. She can train hard, she's got the right attitude towards racing, she doesn't get all nervous and that. And I've got another girl that's ranked sixth in the UK this year, Natasha Wynn who um, is again not frightened to train and she's also not worried about racing. The only thing I'm very strict on with the groups is you only train to what we set you. In other words, they're not doing six days a week when they're 12 or 13, which a lot of coaches do because they want success at an early rate. I'm not like that. My philosophy is let's build them up slowly. If they get success early, fine. But the idea is, is to build them up gradually. So um, for all those young people out there who have no idea about athletics, um, how, how does it work in terms of sort of going through the ranks and then um, sort of, you know, becoming a bit more successful and then, like you say, being given a GB vest? Or it comes down to hard work. It comes down to belief as well. Um, you can turn up and you can be an average runner, but I've seen it. Um, I've got a lad that raced on Saturday who came at 40th in the mini marathon under 15 for the borough of the whole London. Saturday, he came ninth in a similar field over the cross country. And I said to Nate, that progression just tells you the hard work and a bit of belief is your first step. You've got other steps to take, but that's your first big step. You've taken that step. Now, slowly but surely, we move on. We don't increase your training, but what we do do is we keep getting you to believe in yourself and carry on. So what can the average young person um, expect to to do in a week in terms of training and looking at that I would look at under 15 shouldn't really be doing any more than about 15 20 miles a week and that that builds in within that two anaerobic sessions which they do here on Tuesday with my groups Thursday at Lee Valley which is on the Bart Trail that's all they need to be doing you know even under 17 doesn't need to be doing any more than about 30 35 miles a week I've seen it in my time <clears throat> I had a guy Terry Colton, he was 15, around him, he was doing 100 miles a week. That's far too much. Won the English schools cross country in 1969, 1970, I was ahead of him in the track and field championships. And that just tells you the story. So it's a progression. And that you ask Daniel Rowden that, and he'll tell you the same thing. He started on a very low mileage, he never did big mileages all the way through. We looked after him and we took him through. And that he's got talent, we know that, he's got a good head on him. That's why it's progressed to where he's got to. Well, it's incredible. And uh, competitions are on Sundays, and do they have to go quite far afield? Cross country, it's on a Saturday, and we do travel a little bit. We travel up to Mansfield for the cross national cross country relays. We travel to Birmingham for the national road relays. Um, so that, that, and also we got to Liverpool for the European Cross Challenge. So those are the three we travel for. The rest of them is all, it's all local. Uh, we compete in the Met League, as I said to you before. In the summer, it's all local. We compete in local leagues. There's lots of open meetings around. Watford's a very, very big popular meeting. Um, so the only travelling they really have is the English schools. If it's not locally, which it probably isn't, and I'm hoping next year it might be at the Commonwealth Stadium where they're doing the Commonwealth Cup. I've heard, I've heard some vibes that they might be using that stadium as a pilot for the Commonwealth Games. So I put the English schools there. Fantastic. So. Um, do you get involved with coaching any other sports? No. <laughs> so there's no crossover? No, 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 no. I used to referee football and I did that from 1995 through to about three years ago and I stopped it. But I did that for about 25 years and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Youth football only, 
hugely enjoyed doing it, but that was it. You know, apart from that, I'm a football follower. Love football. I follow a club called AFC Wimbledon. Huge. Got a lot of history with them because that's where I used to live. Uh, but apart from that, running is the only thing I coach. So they, there's never sort of a cross discipline, or they say, "Oh, we'll bring John over to." No, I mean I work in schools at the moment because I'm retired. I, I used to work in insurance, but I work in schools now. So I go to a school, two schools, for four evenings a week. Well, straight after school, three till four. And I deliver sort of athletics training, slightly different to what I do there because it's primary schools. So the whole idea with them is fun. It's fun through fitness. It's not like running 10 400s out there. This is a totally different thing. But they enjoy it. And then actually from some of those, they've come to join with a green off the back of that because they've seen it from a very early age and sort of think, OK, yeah, this guy seems to want to do it for fun. And then he gradually gets people moving a little bit more as they as they grow up. And uh, So... <coughs> Throughout your time here, this is, this is a difficult question, but are there any real standout moments um, for you? Not necessarily big achievements, but things that will always stay with you. The one thing that really does stand out is not Danny winning the English schools, it's not Kane and winning the National Cross Country Championships back in 2012. The one thing that really stands out for me is when the under 15 boys won the National Cross Country Relay back in 2017. That was a big moment for me because I had to make two very late changes to the team, which I thought, I think I've got this right. I hope so. And luckily, I did have it right. That stands out because when we were at, when I was at Belgrave, uh, when we came fourth in the national, I had a really bad fall, and that cost us silver medals. And I always look back, that was better than Blackpool. That sort of took the memory of what happened to Blackpool away from me. Now I look back at that as coach and team manager. So that's the standout for me. So um, you spoke a little bit about um, where you saw athletics going. So what would be your ideal vision? Where, where would you like things to go moving forwards? Um, if you're looking at this club, I want to see us progress um, in the Met League to carry on doing well. I want to see us to do well in the national championships we do cross country. Uh, and I want to see the athletes progress. The everything I do every year is I set t targets for all the kids. and. I hope that they can achieve those they did mostly last year. So we set new targets, which are harder, but as they get older, and if I'm getting that wrong, then I think I'm failing. But last year, we had a big percentage that got it. It was a huge percentage that actually did personal best. And I think it's about 98% did. So I thought, that's not bad. That's, that's it. But the most important thing for me is to ensure they enjoy doing what they're doing. Because if they don't, we're doing something wrong. And is that the kind of message you would pass on to any young person who, who wanted to be a sports? Yeah, I'd say if you come into any sort of sport, no matter what it is, enjoy what you're doing, have faith in what you're doing, have belief in what you're doing. And if you can do all that and you're prepared to put a bit of hard work in, you know what, you'll get there. You will achieve something maybe that you didn't think you could. Because I never thought I could achieve two years at a GB schools vest. So I think that is really important to have that belief. So we can see why you're such a great coach then John from uh, those kind of uh, that kind of ethos amazing yeah that's that's exactly my message you know yeah. I, I give across without a doubt oh it's been so great talking to you thank and you, you so as much, well John thank you're you more than welcome uh, no. wonderful thank you no thank you very thank much you. indeed thank you